Hannibal. So if you're new to my channel um, because you're just watching this series, let me explain a few things. I watch the show and then I talk about the show. You're caught up. One thing I like to do is say the name of the episode. And if you're a fan of Hannibal at all, you know that their episode names are in other languages. So you can tune in every week and watch me butcher the name of the show. This is episode one of season three of Hannibal, and it is titled, okay, get ready. Antipasto. Close enough. Let's do it. Whoa. Oh, it's a car. The fire startled me. Motorcycle, never mind. If that is Hannibal on that motorcycle, mmm. Oh. Why do I have the hots for Hannibal? And Will, and everyone. It's a double fisted kind of bash. Hey oh. So an occasional dissection is the only thing that will do. I love that he thinly admits that he likes to cut people up. You're gonna get eaten, dude. The food porn in this show is like half the reason I watch. I myself have like no patience for cooking, so if I ate people, I just put them like in ramen or something. What's one? Oh god, you're so creepy, I love it. You feed a man his own legs. You, there's nothing more thug than that. Served on a sugar cane cream. Before they left the room. Oh, God, you're evil and I love it. This isn't cannibalism, baby. It's only cannibalism. Burn! I just still see Dana Scully. No matter what she's in, she's just Scully. He's gonna eat you. I'm gonna need translation on that. She's like, dance with me so you stop antagonizing him. I've killed hardly anybody, Julia. That's nice. Well, good for you. You no longer have ethical concerns, Helen. You have aesthetic ones. It's like Dorian Gray of eating people. That is a fancy bathtub. Though it looks tiny. Baby girl, get up. No. Go above the water. They're all about the super close-up slow-mo shots in this episode. Don't get me wrong, I mean, they look stunning, but it's an hour show, come on. Behind the crest. He doesn't have to get dressed, he, let him be. I love the convenient object that covers the winkle kind of shots. I let him see enough. You didn't let me see enough. Do you trust me? No, no one trusts you. Picking a gun off of Hannibal is pretty much as dumb as pulling a gun on Hannibal. Medieval torture devices are like the best kind of devices. It was just, here I was and then there you were. I never forget things. Do you have a crush? If you are free, my wife and I would love to have you for dinner. He always says that and then you die. Dude, up close snails are like the coolest aliens ever. I'm in love with the fact of like eating someone as they're alive. I'm alarmed for myself. You're traveling alone, Anthony. Don't answer that. Oh, you're gonna die. Oysters, acorns, and masala. That's what ancient Romans would feed animals to improve their flavor. Oh, you're a sharp one. He's very particular about how I taste. Mmm. Is it that kind of person? Uh, he, he's thinking naughty. It's, it's grotesque in a different way. He's letting you walk around on your own. Run away! Oh, that's gross. No one wants to see blood drip out of a rabbit's nose. People being eaten, I'm okay with, though. What's happening? Is it sexy times or is he killing her? What the heck is going on? It's like a Saw movie up in here. What the heck happened? That is an awesome shot. Boy, it looks like he has wings. Please do. Interesting. What kind of friend would I be? Are you here to twist me into an uncomfortable position? hey -oh. You're gonna be killed, Scully. It took you that long to pack. I mean, you knew he was coming home. That was the best comeback from a commercial ever. Slow motion blood in the face, hitting someone with a bust. That guy was gonna help you. Are you in this very moment observing? She likes to watch. You're not gonna get out, dude. You should be flattered. When a guy brings home food for you, it's nice. So I hang up your coat. Gentlemen. I love escargot. Never had escargot that's been fed on human flesh, but like, I'd try it. You're being a bratty kid, you just eat your food. If only the company could be Will Graham. 
he called out your crush. Hannibal doesn't like your table manners, sir. Oh, that is awesome. Torso on a tripod. That was a weird episode. I don't actually think I liked it. I mean, like, this is supposed to be, like, kicking off this season, and it... Very slow. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I watched the show because I love the relationship between Will and Hannibal. Kind of oddly ship it. I mean, that's always been the appeal to the show for me. And for an episode without Will even in it? Nah. I mean, I get that they're trying to set up that, oh, Hannibal's with Bedelia, and they're doing their thing, and here's what you missed. Eh. Basically, the episode opens Hannibal's driving around in a motorcycle, which was cool. Hannibal goes to this fancy party. He's staring at this dude that, you know, he's going to kill. This other guy comes up and he's like, isn't that guy a jerk? I was his TA. Hated him then. They kind of bond over not liking someone and then Hannibal just leaves the party. Hannibal's waiting outside on his motorcycle. The guy leaves. He's like, what's up? The guy's like, what's up? The guy drives home and Hannibal's waiting for him there. And you're like, he's going to kill you and like take over your life or whatever. Cuts to Hannibal cooking stuff, which is always a delight. He sits down to eat, the dude's wife comes home, and he's like, what's up? And then you're like, oh, she's gonna die too! Then there's like a flashback of him sitting with Abel Gideon, and he's like serving him his leg. They kind of have some banter back and forth, whatever. It cuts to another fancy party. Hannibal's dancing with Bedelia. This guy comes up and, you know, is assuming he's the dude he killed. And is like, oh, you got a job here. I'm pretty sure you're not smart about things. And then Hannibal just totally just slaps him down. He's like, listen to this. He says smart stuff. It was in another language. I didn't know what he's talking about. But Delia's like, um, we should go dance, stranger. Ma mainly just get away from Hannibal before he kills you right now. The guy's like, if he's so smart, he should totally lecture on this. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. Later, Hannibal and Bedelia are back in their room. One thing about Hannibal is they, they say a lot of words, but an entire scene can only really have one meaning. And they just dance around that meaning the whole time. More or less, she's like, I'm afraid you might kill me. And he's like, I might. But how was your night? She gets in a bath, slips under the water, dreaming about like falling deep into some depths, and then she just jumps up and is like, whoa, what was that? Flashback time, she's walking into Hannibal's place, and she pours herself a drink, and he's in the shower. He gets out, she pulls a gun on him. She starts asking him questions like, is Will Graham alive? And he's like, oh, whatever, you're not my doctor anymore. And she's like, I couldn't help you. And she's like, plus, I'm optimistic you won't kill me. And he's like, really? And then she puts her gun down. I'm like, that's stupid. Then it shows her in, like, present time going to a store and buying stuff, but it was all in a foreign language, so I don't know what she was doing. Hannibal's in his big, like, giant office and putting together his presentation that he's going to give later on Dante. And that dude, Anthony, that he met at the party previously shows up, and he's like, Hey, we're buddies, let's catch up. And then Hannibal pulls one of those, You know, me and my wife would love to have you for dinner. Then there's another flashback of Hannibal and Abel. Hannibal's cut off his arm now and has it hanging up, and he has, like, snails eating the flesh slowly. Abel's like, You're feeding... Me to the snails to make them taste better, and you're feeding me well, so I taste better. Imagine what you taste like. And he's like, one day someone's going to take a bite out of you. And then later, at one of Hannibal's many awkward dinners he has, the guy Anthony is joining him and Bedelia. Anthony notices that Bedelia is eating things that they used to feed animals to make them taste better, which is coincidentally what Hannibal had been feeding Abel. And she's just like, oh, this boy should run if he's smart. She mentions that Hannibal has a sophisticated palate and wants her to taste good and the guy thinks it's going to be a freaky party all of a sudden. Hannibal mentions that he should come to Roman Fell's lecture, which she gives this look like, oh, uh, he's going to kill him like right now because he's going to find out that it's Hannibal like masquerading as the guy. But then, you know, Hannibal lets the guy go and she's like, wait, why did you do that? And he's like, well, what would you have me do? Then there's another scene of her going to the store and buying stuff and there was like a rabbit hanging upside down and there was blood dripping out of its nose and it was creepy. Then there's like a really weird flashback that I'm not sure I get. Like Hannibal and Medelia have always had this weird kind of thing that happened to them with one of her patients. Like he clearly helped her cover up something that happened and they kind of showed it. Basically it's like her waking up on the floor freaking out and she's got blood like all the way up one arm. And then there's a quick cut of her like pulling the length of her arm out of this guy's mouth. Hannibal walks in and is like, what happened? And she was like, I was attacked. But then she's like, I got reckless. And he's like, no, you did like... A, a exercise in power and then later she's like washing the blood off and Hannibal's like wiping blood off her face and he's like I can help you tell the story that you want told just ask for help and she's like please help me that explains nothing and then in present times Hannibal's giving his lecture on Dante and he keeps talking about like betrayers and stuff and as he's saying these things he walks up and like puts his hand on her shoulder and she's got this look of like I need to get out now 
And then, like, halfway through, the guy Anthony shows up, and he kind of is like, huh, I thought Fel was giving this presentation. And then Hannibal looks back at the seat that Bedelia was sitting in, and it's empty. And then at the end of the lecture, everyone's, like, congratulating him on what a good job he did. The one guy that was, like, doubting him and, like, I don't think he can do this job walks up and is, like, kind of just being snarky towards him. And then Anthony walks up and doesn't even blow his cover at all, but it's like, yeah, I used to TA for him. And it's totally, like, playing along with Hannibal's ruse. Then once Hannibal and Anthony are alone, Anthony's like, so what happened to Phil? And Hannibal's like, I ain't telling you. And he's like, no, don't worry, I don't care, I, I didn't like the guy. So it's like, okay, do you know that Hannibal killed him? And then Anthony's like, don't worry, I'm, I'm gonna help you out, you help me out. It'll be like a mutual thing. And at that point, I'm like, hey, Hannibal might have a new buddy. Or just kill him. It could go one of two ways. And then back at Hannibal's place, Bedelia has got like a suitcase and she's like getting ready to leave. And like right as she walks through the door, she sees the handle turning. And Hannibal walks in with Anthony and she has this look of like, I'm about to die. And then it comes back from commercial and you see slow motion blood like splattering on her face. And you see Hannibal is just like brain the guy with a bust. And then Hannibal's like, are you observing or are you participating? And she's like, wait, wait, what? And he's like, observing or participating? He's like, did you weigh the outcomes? Did you predict that this would happen? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, well, you're part of it. And like, as they're talking, Anthony's like slowly trying to get to the door, crawling, leaving a trail of blood. And then Hannibal just walks over, grabs his head, and pops his neck. But not like in a chiropractor way, like he's dead. And then he calmly turns around, he's like, can I take your coat? Such a gentleman. Then it kind of like shows Hannibal riding alone on a train, and kind of thinking, and then flashback. He's like cooking the snails and then he puts the snails on the table. And Abel has very bad table manners. Clinking your silverware? No thank you, sir. Abel's like, why do you think I'm allowing this? And Hannibal's like, well, why do you think I'm allowing this? And he's like, well, because snails are not the only creatures that like eating with company. If only that company could be Will Graham. Totally called his crush out. Seriously, Will and Hannibal have like the weirdest bromance going on. Abel like stabs at the snail a lot eats it, drops his silverware, and is like, I'm just curious what's gonna happen when all this happens to you. Cause truly, it's just a matter of time. Then there's another shot of Hannibal just riding the train by himself and making little origami. And then it shows in the lecture hall, there's like this torso that's been skinned up on a tripod. Whose torso is it? Hopefully Anthony's, he better not kill Bedelia. Not yet, anyway. And then he just stares out the window of the train and then credits. Like I said, it's, it was a good episode establishing at least where Hannibal is this season, but it's not, you know, why I watch the show. It, 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 it didn't feel like any other episodes of the show, which in itself is kind of bad because I watch the show for a certain reason. I kind of expect it, especially as a season opener. But I'm optimistic. I want to see my Will Graham again, that poor, poor little puppy of a man. And, you know, like everyone else, like who survived, who's, who didn't. So if I left anything out, if there's anything you guys want to talk about, just drop the comment below. And don't forget to do the things. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys later, so until next time.